Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really, really well and welcome to another reading vlog. I'm kind of starting a bit of a new vlog series. I think there's only two episodes, so is that a series? And it's going to be reading other people's best books of the year. So obviously this is a very popular thing to do on booktube, but I love it. I think it's really, really fun. And today we are starting with reading booktubers best books of the year. So I did this last year with the book hotties. So Kieran, Jay, Hannah and CJ, I read some of their favorite books of the year. So we're going to some different booktubers this time. I had to think about the people that I absolutely have loved watching this year or the people that I think I have similar taste to. And so I've selected four booktubers and four books to read over the course of this vlog. So now I'm gonna send you back in time to the beginning of January when I started collecting info on this. So every time a best of video came up that I wanted to watch, I watched it and I vlogged it to find out what book I'd be reading. So off you go and I'll see you back here in a sec. No comments on the clip of me, please. I do have COVID, but I'm sad and I wanna watch the videos that I was saving to watch to react to see what books I was gonna read. Is that making sense? So I'm just gonna watch them and then record my reaction. Okay, we're at Simon's number one spot. I have no idea what it's gonna be. Well, I have a little, I have a thought, but we'll see. Let's get on with it. You'd have probably guessed, It's Still Life by Sarah Women. And I just think this is phenomenal. You'll all probably know if you've been here for a long time and if you're not, hello if you're new. Um, but you'll, all if you've been here a while will know how much i love tim man it was still life by sarah winman which i wasn't really surprised about and this is a book that i have not read i know a lot of people have loved it for some reason it didn't feel like my thing because it's like historical and stuff but everyone seems to love it who's read it and maybe it'll be like a nice piece of january joy so still life by sarah winman okay now i'm gonna watch dawes i'm a bit I'm excited to watch this because Dawes hasn't posted for ages. I feel like it's going to be a lot of romance in it. It's a little bit out of my old wheelhouse, but let's give it a go. Okay, so she Dawes hasn't done them in order. Um, she's picked five fiction books. I think I want to read fiction for this vlog. And I've read three of them. So she just talked about a romance, like a proper romance, a bit out of my comfort zone. The last book that we're going to talk about is We Are All Birds of Uganda by Hassa Zayan. This is a marriage between history and the present of reconciliation of the old and newfound identities, amalgamation of strands and struggles of the Ugandan Asian diaspora. So although she hasn't said this one's like her favourite favourite, I feel like I'm okay to pick it. One, because it was the last one in the video, but also because I haven't read it and it was in her top five favourites. Um, this is a book, I had this on my TBR, never got round to it, so excited to read this. And I think the paperback, I'm hoping it's coming out in January. I really don't want to have to buy a hardback. I'll, I'll look that up. But yeah, we've got Dawes, we are all birds of Uganda. Excited about it. Okay, it's now the 12th of January. I don't know what, I don't think I said the date in the other clip. And Brittany from Books with Brittany has just posted her best books of the year. I've been waiting for it. Her and one other person have been making me wait. Um, but I'm gonna watch this now and hopefully get my next book that I have to read for this vlog. She actually also split her best of into fantasy and literary fiction. It's like she knew. Um, and I don't know if she's ranked them or not, but I'm gonna watch now and we'll find out. Okay, so interesting. Also don't talk about my hair. So Britney's list is really, really interesting. I found Britney's channel this year and I'm obsessed with her. I have read a lot of the books in this top 10 and I've only got up to, she's just announced her third, but I already know what the top two are gonna be because I'm a true, a true subscriber. Um, so yeah, I've read and loved a lot of the books on this list. So I actually think we're gonna be going down the list and I think, I've accidentally found out what it's gonna be and it's an interesting one. So she just said her third favorite is Freshwater, which was one of my favorite books of last year. And I know the top two, I will watch it, but I know the top two are gonna be Know My Name and A Little Life, I'm pretty sure, which were two of my absolute favorites of this year. So it's boding well. And then her fourth favorite was Earthlings by Sayaka Moretta, which I also read, but then her fifth favorite, which I hadn't, I'll insert a clip, was Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi, which is like a YA contemporary. I would never have picked it up, but Brittany also says she never would have picked it up and she loved it and it's about sisters, although it does sound sad. So I think that's gonna be our choice. I think I'm gonna love them too. Coming in at number six is something completely unexpected and that is Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. And the reason that this is so unexpected is because technically this is shelved as a young adult contemporary. Okay, well, that's our third book decided. I'll be reading Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I like that this book is kind of bring, this video is kind of already bringing up books that are a bit different for me or that I'd be like, oh, maybe I want to read that and then haven't. Just waiting on that last person now 
and they have said they're going to post their best of this week so i'll come back to you when they do why do i have these cursed plaits in in all of these clips jen campbell has finally posted finally not sounded shady jen campbell has now posted her best books of the year so hopefully we'll be getting my fourth book i've been watching it and she has put them in order and she's just about to say her top book of the year and i can't I feel like I should be able to guess it. A few of them I thought would have come up already. So let's find out. They can chop and change and you could put them in various different orders. But today I'm going to say that this one is my favourite book of 2021. So this is Mrs. March by Virginia Fito. Of course, Mrs. March. Okay, so she picked Mrs. March by Virginia Fito. I should have known that that. I was like, what's the one that hasn't come up yet? It was that. I have actually read that. Um, but her second one was a Persephone books book that I'd never heard of before from like the 1930s or something. So that's interesting. I don't think that it's a book I would have necessarily picked up. It's called The Hopkins Manuscript by R.C. Sheriff. So I need to do a little bit of investigation into that. Other than that, her third place was Fingersmith, which I've read. Um, and I have read quite a lot of them in that list, but yes, I'm gonna investigate that book. Okay, so as you can see, the booktubers that I had selected were Simon of Savage Reads, Jen Campbell, Doz and Brittany from Books with Brittany. And there has been a little bit of mixing around of the books that I've selected, so let's talk you through them. So as you can see, Simon's best book of the year was Still Life by Sarah Winman, which I was going to read, but then in planning for another video, which is the other episode in this series, I realized I had to read Still Life for that. So I will be reading Still Life in February, maybe end of January, but it's not in this video. So I looked at the rest of Simon's best books of the year and in the number two spot was in the end it was all about love by Musa Kwonga which is a book that I've already read and absolutely loved and then number three was The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr which is a book that I have here I've had the hardback since like early last year I think um and I've never gotten around to it and I know it was a really massive book last year loads of people loved it um, I've been a bit scared to read it just because it's kind of long, it's historical, I think it's going to be really sad. This um, is set on a slave plantation and it's about two men who are kind of in a gay relationship before that was really a thing. That's all I know about it, I'm not a big blurb reader, but basically it's about two men in a relationship during that really difficult time of American history. And yeah, I feel like it is going to be sad, but everyone loves it so hopeful that I will too. So this is my pick from Simon. Also I thought it might be interesting to see like of the list that each of them provided how many books I've read slash loved of theirs. So for Simon's I've read as I say in the end it was all about love by Musa Kwonga and loved it. I've read this one Sky Day. I actually read that in January and I loved that. I think they were the only two out of his top 10. So interesting because I think of myself as someone who has a really similar reading taste to Simon. And there is a few books on his list that are also on my TBR, but that's interesting. The other one that's changed slightly is Jen Campbell, because as you saw in the video, her top spot was Mrs. March, which I've read. And her second one was The Hopkins Manuscript by R.C. Sheriff. And I've decided not to read that book just because it is a sci-fi book. And although me and Jen also, I think, have a really similar reading taste, I don't like sci-fi. I, I just know that I don't, and I don't want to be going into this video like it's an experiment it's trying to find books that I will love but also you kind of got to know yourself you know and so I decided not to read that one so I looked through Jen's list and again I had read and loved a few of them on there so her number three spot was Fingersmith by Sarah Waters which is just an absolutely amazing book that I read years ago she had Mrs Caliban by Rachel Ingalls which is a book I read and loved last year Death in Her Hands by Tessa Moshfeg, which is an absolute five-star book for me. I love Moshfeg. So I was looking at the list and she also had like Transcendent Kingdom on there, Secret Lives of Church Ladies, Boy Parts, all books I absolutely love. I think she had about six books on the list that I absolutely love, which is good to know. But she also had on there The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith. And that reminded me that one of my kind of authors that I told myself I really want to get to in 2022 is Patricia Highsmith, in part because of how much Jen's been talking about her over this past year. She's a classic author who I'd wanted to get to, but it was really Jen this year that's made me realize, oh, I really need to read from her. So I'm gonna read from Jen, The Talented Mr. Ripley. This is obviously quite a classic book. I know vaguely what it's about, that it's about this man. I mean, we use the term Mr. Ripley now to kind of like refer to a bit of a wheeler dealer, tricky guy who is trying to steal your life. So that's what I know about it. I'm pretty sure it's a queer story as well. And I'm just so, so excited to read from Patricia Highsmith. And it feels perfect for this because it's Jen who's really made me want to read from her over the last year. So that is book number two. And then we're sticking with what the others were. So 
from Britney. I will be reading, as I said, Yoke. I've hauled this book because I didn't already own it. And I'm definitely interested about this. It's a story about sisters. It's a technically a YA novel, but Britney talks about how that's not really her taste, but that she loved this book anyway. I think it's a lot about grief. I think it's about a sister becoming ill. I think there's some eating disorder stuff in here. So although this is why it does sound like it is gonna be quite heavy still. So I'm excited. I would never have picked this up. So I think that's really interesting. And as I mentioned, Britney's top I think five books I think maybe this was number six or something and all of the top five I'd read and loved and there was loads of books on Britney's list as well that I'd absolutely loved I think maybe of all of them hers was the most similar to what I would have put on best of books this year and last year so that's really interesting very excited to see how I feel about Yoke and then finally Dawes I'm going to be reading We Are All Birds of Uganda by Hafsa Zayan but the paperback comes out on the 27th of January so next week and so I'm just going to I pre-ordered the paperback and I'll probably read that one last when it arrives because I didn't want to buy the hardback when the paperback was just about to come out. Um, Dawson's list was a lot shorter but I had read Seven Days in June by Tia Williams and Transcendent Kingdom by Yar Gassi and absolutely loved both of those books as well. So I'm hopeful. I've got my stack. I trust these human beings. I think we have really similar tastes and I'm excited to see how this video goes. So yeah, let's get into the vlog hello so time to pick up my first book and i decided to go for yoke by mary hk Choi, which is britney's offering in this video because i've just finished reading like a really long quite grueling book which was to paradise by hanya yanagahara and although i do think this book is going to be sad because i think i mentioned it's about two sisters and one of them gets cancer it's like a little bit shorter and because it is this kind of ya crossover i just feel like I don't know, it seemed like it might be a bit easier to digest in terms of the writing. So I'm 75 pages in and we're following a character called Jane who is Korean but she moved to America when she was like four, um, grew up in Texas and now lives in New York. She is at fashion school and she's not very close to her family. She has this older sister called June and they don't massively get on. June's like super smart, kind of got her shit together and Jane kind of resents her for that but at the start of the novel they meet up and June is like, I've got cancer. So June's like 23, Jane's 20. And this kind of starts them reconnecting a bit, spending a bit more time together. But at this point, like their relationship is still very strained. Immediately, like I wasn't absolutely loving the writing. So it's set in New York and there was a lot of like social media references, a lot of kind of like contemporary media references that can feel a little bit, I don't know, cringy is not the right word, but a little bit false at times. I don't particularly enjoy reading from Jane's perspective. I don't know if that is because it's like a YA novel. She's very, um, I just find it quite annoying. Like she's really romanticizes New York and she's like quite a bitter character, which I actually find interesting. It's not that I don't like reading from her because she's unlikable, though she is unlikable. I don't know, there's just more something about like the tone it's written in. But sticking with it, I'm interested. I love reading books about sisters and I'm definitely interested to see how that relationship's gonna develop. I really think it's gonna be sad, obviously because immediately we know that June has cancer and yeah, I feel like it's not going to end well. Um, but also we're getting hints that June, that Jane, I've said their name wrong every single time I had to edit it. It is suffering from like quite a severe eating disorder. We're just getting hints of that. And she lives with this guy, this white guy called Jeremy, who she's in love with, who's kind of using her. So there's definitely aspects that I'm interested in. And yeah, hopefully I'll just get into more of the writing style. But now it's Friday evening and I'm having one of my favourite kinds of nights where I'm going to the pub and then getting a takeaway with my parents. Hello, it is now Monday night. I didn't read all weekend because, well, I was out all day Saturday and then I had stressful things on. And if I'm stressed about something, like if I have work that I need to do that's stressful, I can't read. Like either I'm doing the work or I'm staring into space like this. But stressful things over now. Monday night, celebrating with a wee glass of Prosecco because why not, bougie bitch. And I'm halfway through Yoke. And I really can't decide like how I feel about this book. I kind of fluctuate between being like, oh, that's really on the nose and like really interesting. And it is very like compelling and plotty and then being like, oh, I'm not sure I like it. Um, So I don't think I need to say too much about the plot. It is very plotty. Um, we have these two sisters, one of them is ill, they have a very stressful relationship and that's all kind of shaking out. And like I say, there's stuff happening, like we have plot beats and we've had like a little potential romance introduced, which I guess speaks to it being technically YA, which is fun to read about and it is like quite sweet. I find it unrealistic, just that I just, 
I don't know, find it a, a tad unrealistic, but it's, it's fun and it's easy to read. But yeah, like I say, I keep not really knowing how I feel about it. So on the one hand, I do find the writing a bit melodramatic, particularly like about New York or when our main character is making these like grand, kind of angsty, sweeping statements. That's not usually my vibe, but then equally, she's a 20 year old girl, a 20 year old woman, who is so bad at everything in her life and is so self-destructive and so insecure that I'm like, hmm, will that do be ringing some bells? Not in the specific ways that she is, but I actually think they've re like Mary H.K. Choi has really nailed that like so self-obsessed, so like stressed and insecure. Like it's believable, even if it is melodramatic, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm very like torn about it, but I do think slight melodrama aside, the things that the like larger ideas about family and sisters and having, I guess, quite like a turbulent childhood really plays into it. And I think that is really working and it is a really interesting relationship between the two sisters and also I'm loving all of the stuff about coming from an immigrant family, a Korean family, all of that. Extremely deep emotionally intelligent self-reflection about how our main character Jane feels like that's shaped her experience and speaking to the, her kind of potential romances with another Korean American guy and and looking at that and the the nuances with that I think is brilliant um, and so I'm really really enjoying that insight and yeah like I say it's that kind of angsty novel but I do think that makes sense and I think although I maybe don't read from that as much I can imagine people relating to this although I think at times it does err a bit on the like glamorizing side of this like I just want to be angsty and get drunk and because I'm such a mess. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm really torn. I think there's a lot to like about this. It's maybe a bit out of the comfort zone of what I usually read. So we will see, interesting one. I'm definitely a bit torn, but I'll keep reading. I'll probably just now check in with you when I finish Yoke. Hello, it is now the next day and it's been a miserable, miserable one, not gonna lie. So, so cold, just been in the house. I did go for a walk on the beach, but just been in, working. It's very much giving January not loving it. Also, Al's out tonight, which is fine, apart from we've been watching Cheer on Netflix. I really, really want to watch it, but I'm trying to be a good person and not watch it without him, so I can't. So I'm going to stir fry, uh, and I guess I will we'll just read, which is fine, because <laughs> I quite like reading. Not sure I mentioned that. I also finished Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi, and as you'll have seen, I was very mixed with this book as I went through it, and it's definitely not like a new favourite. I don't know that I'd rate it. It's probably like a three. The reason I'm still conflicted is that the writing style wasn't hugely my thing and there was definitely elements of the plot, particularly like the romance that are just not the kind of typical thing that I like to read and I think that's fine. And I think I'd say it's definitely a crossover YA because certain aspects of the plot and it's very much like a coming of age story dealing with a lot of Kind of i'd say like hangover feelings from being a teenager but with a kind of older thing to it i don't think that kind of book is necessarily for me but there was also a lot to really like about it particularly as i kind of mentioned the family stuff especially the sister stuff like by the end of it i was just i was really invested in the relationship between jane and june i think it was really well done the way that they kind of reconnect and it did move me at the end i thought it ended in a kind of perfect place in that story without tying up too much and i think yeah the sisters were a good way of exploring the dynamics of the entire family as i say those really kind of turbulent teenage years um and the way that you're so i don't know self-obsessed but not in a bad way you're just so contained in that so much insecurity and the way that the character kind of dealt with and kind of moved through those feelings of anger resentment that she had in her teenage years and yeah the relationship between the sisters was beautiful in the end the relationship with the mother i also really really enjoyed and i would also say the thing about this book um the kind of exploration of eating disorders i thought was really really well done really especially towards the end where that kind of ramps up really quite uncomfortable to read quite like sharp and affecting um so i did enjoy this book i wouldn't necessarily rule out reading from Mary H.K. Troy again. It's definitely made me realise like I'm not a, I just, I'm not a YA reader. There's nothing wrong with that, but I don't think I ever will be. But yeah, it was a really worthwhile read. I think it's a, I think it's a three. I'm not sad I've read it. I did get emotional at the end and I do love a sister book. I'm always a sucker for a sister book. So currently as it stands, Brittany is in last place, but she's also in first place. Um, But hopefully I'll find a book that I connect with even more. We Are All Birds of Uganda still isn't out in paperback, so I don't have that as an option, but I think I'll pick up another book tonight. We will find out post 
meeting my tea. Okay, decision time, something I'm always really successful at. I think I'm gonna pick up The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith because I'm in the mood for something a little bit more fun, a little bit more lighthearted. I've been reading some, well, I've been reading some quite long books in January and then interspersing them with some like really easy to read thrillers that I've wanted to read. But I feel like this is gonna be a good sort of midway point because it's a bit more of a classic. When was this book published? Published in 1955, nice little length because tomorrow I'm going into the office and then I'm staying late in town because I'm doing an event. So a lot of reading on the train. So he's a nice little size to fit in my bag versus the profits. I love the profits paperback. I don't know if anyone's seen it, like the pink version. Also, I'm just a paperback hoe, but I really like it anyway. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I kind of know what to expect. Like I say, like I know the vague synopsis, but I don't know what to expect from her writing. Gonna start reading this tonight and see what I think of it. yesterday because I was in the office had a really busy day actually I'm not built for being out the house for 12 hours anymore because I did a full day at work and then I did I think I mentioned like a work event which was really fun I really enjoyed it but I was very tired by the time I got home and um, watched some more cheer really enjoying it it's seven days till Daytona the sun is shining feeling good feeling better than I was the last couple of days. Let's talk about The Talented Mr. Ripley, which I have been reading. I am 100 pages in, and I believe this book is 250 pages, and I am absolutely loving this. No real surprises. I've always felt like Patricia Highsmith is an author who I'd really enjoy. I didn't actually know too much what to expect. I think I had like a concept of like the Mr. Ripley character as a kind of con man, someone very charming. Um, and I definitely read books that have been like, oh, it's a bit Mr. Ripley-esque, where a character, yeah, is kind of conning another character, perhaps becoming another character, but I didn't really know what to expect. And I mean, on the front, it says like the number one greatest crime writer. Um, and it definitely has more of that kind of like thrillery, crimey thing than maybe I was expecting. So it's set in, I don't really know, it was written in the 1950s. I think it's probably set around that time. We start in New York with Tom Ripley, who is kind of a down on his luck character. He's a bit of a con man, a bit of a grift, a bit of a chancer. And this guy approaches him and is like, I think you know my son, Dickie. And Tom's like, oh, I kind of know him, but let's see where this goes. So he's like, yeah, I know Dickie. And basically Dickie is from this really rich family, but he's taken himself off to Italy to just like live the high life. And his father, really wants him to come back and like run their company and so basically is like to Tom well you're such a good friend of his I'm sure if you went out to Italy you'd be able to persuade him to come back and so Tom's like amazing free trip to Italy I don't care about this guy but I'm a go so he goes to Italy and he meets Dickie and things kind of go from there I don't want to say too much about the plot it's a fairly short book I'm sure a lot of people already know but also I don't really know because at this point really He's still in Italy with Dickie, although I will say that the first kind of like big, like crimey, thrillery thing happened that kind of surprised me, but I really liked it. I like can't wait to read more now because I don't really know where it's going to go from this point. I love the atmosphere and um, it has a kind of like noir feel at first when they're in New York, but then they go to Italy and it's this like very small, sleepy town, very beautiful, like sea and sun and there's a lot of just like hanging around and going out on the boat and having drinks and I just love reading books about those kind of like Mediterranean like hot days um, and it has a really like nostalgic feel because it's like the 50s it's really visual in my mind but then also Tom Ripley is just such 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 an interesting character this is such a character study and I think because I'd heard of him as you know this kind of grifter character I expected him to be quite kind of cold and quite in control and like he's the one who's pulling all the strings whereas actually there's a lot more nuance to him there's a lot more like anxiety and insecurity to him and he really feels like a character who is on the edge and is gonna unravel throughout this so he does have this sort of slyness about him but also I don't think he's okay and I'm loving it and there's all these like interesting relationships that are happening and dynamics and yeah it's just so so fun really like the way it's written really love the setting and I can't wait to see where it goes so I will be continuing to read this on my lunch break but for now I'm gonna go to work hello so I'm still reading Talented Mr Ripley was reading on my lunch break still enjoying it it's definitely like a 
how would I say, uh, not keeping my keeping up appearances but like someone spiraling out of control and having to do like more and more things to make sure that they stay in control if that makes sense which sometimes I really don't like because I get stressed when characters in books are stressed and it's a really annoying habit that I have but there's so much of like Europe in it and so much interesting stuff about Tom that I'm loving it still it feels fun. I have a neighbour who long story basically when I've known my entire life and then we realised during the pandemic that we both moved into houses a few doors down. And so we've been out a few times and his girlfriend really likes reading. And so I've been like, okay, I'm gonna bring you some books and I keep forgetting to do it, but today I'm gonna take her the books. And so I'm trying to decide what to give her. She's recently read Betty by Tiffany McDaniel, excellent taste. And she's just finished a Stephen King novel, which is a bit less of my kind of wheelhouse. I'm thinking about giving her We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker, which is a kind of, it is a thriller, but it's also like pretty chunky. There's a lot of like character development and stuff. It's set in America, in California, and it's quite um, like small towny. I read this at the end of last year and I absolutely loved it. I thought the crime was satisfying. She does like crime stuff, but I also thought like what was better was the character. So I thought maybe that's a good option, but I want to give her another one as well. And I don't know what to choose. This is a all time favorite book of mine, Love After Love by Ingrid Perso. And it is very, very sad, but then Betty's very, very sad. And she liked that. Is this a good combo or is it a bit too depressing? Okay, I think I'm happy with my choices. I feel like these are both very like good stories that kind of suck you in, really interesting settings, this is set in Trinidad um, and characters. And they are kind of sad, but they're good fun and I love them both. So I'm gonna go take these to my neighbor at some point, good. What good Samaritan neighbour I am providing free books, a free library basically. The chaos of this area is just simply too much for me right now. I have books everywhere and I don't have the bookshelves to fit them. But Alex won't let me buy more bookshelves so what, what are you going to do? Good morning, happy Friday. I'm very pleased that it is Friday this week has felt like it went on for about eight years. Um, so I'm having a cup of tea, just on my word all through the day. Obviously I'm obsessed with Wordle like everyone else. I live in hope and I dream of getting it on the first one or even the second. I've never had a tour, which is why I must say, I don't agree with this whole start every day with adieu, partly because it's a French word, but also because then you'll never get the thrill of just one day accidentally guessing it right. Is that not exciting? Also, I saw that, um, I think it was Books and Lala did like a Wordle chooses what I read reading vlog and that is just such a good idea. I would actually love to do that if that's not like stealing it. Maybe I'll do that. So yeah, have a cup of tea before I stop work and I stumbled across some chocolate coins in the cupboard and I was like, do I treat myself to a chocolate coin because it's a Friday? And then I saw this, which is like a chocolate banknote, which I kind of think is hilarious. Um, and to me, silver paper means it's going to be white chocolate, but I know it's not going to be. It's just going to be a classic milk chocolate banknote. Also last night, I finished reading The Talented Mr. Ripley and I really, really enjoyed it. I think that as someone reading it for the first time now, as I mentioned, like I have read so many other books that so obviously borrow from this and are inspired by this, that I think actually like, it's so cool to read the original. Like I don't know for certain that there's nothing else similar that came before this, but it is such a great idea. Like this guy who trying to go up in life, kind of using people and then getting a bit caught in his web of lies, but trying to escape it and I just really like that kind of intricate plot where it's all about like okay well how's he gonna get out of this and how's he gonna get out of that and it's so introspective you're so in his mind and it was just really really good fun and I love that it's a bit of a you're meant to be on his side even though he's objectively a terrible person like you are rooting for him and I really like the way it ended um and I think there's actually like more in this series which I'm not sure that I will pick up I might I'm definitely gonna read some more Patricia Highsmith I really want to read Deep Water I really want to read Strangers on a Train, um, but I don't know, part of me is like, I just love the way this ended, but then equally, I think Tom Ripley's such an interesting character that I'm kind of like, maybe I do want to see where, where he goes next and what he does. Love the queer overtones, undertones, um, and yeah, enjoyed this. I think I'd give it a four. So that puts it currently above yoke, um, but we've still got two books left. I finished work at lunchtime today, which is nice. So when I am finished for the day, I will come back to you and I'll pick my next book. Okay, so I finished work now for the weekend. I was gonna go for a walk, you know, fresh air, ETC, but it's so grim outside. It's really cold and it's really gray. And 
I don't really want to right now. What I want to do is decide what book I'm reading next. We've got two books left. And my options are We Are All Birds of Uganda. Oh, this, you haven't actually seen this. This only arrived yesterday and I really like the gold on the cover. Um, we Are All Birds of Uganda or The Prophets, which you can't see. I feel like I'm more scared by The Prophets because it looks longer, but then hardbacks always look longer. And I think both of these books might be a bit sad. Um, so I do need to make a decision, which is problematic for me, but I think first, actually, I'm gonna go make some lunch. And I'm really fancying something that I think I invented, which I definitely, I'm sure, didn't, but it's the eggy bagel. It's like eggy bread, like French toast, but you do it with a bagel. And honestly, chef's kiss, delicious. So let's make an eggy bagel. she is not my best work got a wee bit messy in the pan because i do like to pull the egg into the hole to close the bagel hole but i'm very excited to eat this would highly recommend hello so i decided to pick up we are all birds of uganda by hafsa zayan which is doz's pick not that she knows she picked it doz's recommendation shall we say for this video and i am now 100 pages in and I'm enjoying it. I would say it took me a little bit to get into because of maybe the writing style, but I'll tell you what the book's about. So we're following like a two timeline story. In the present, we have Samir, who is a 26 year old corporate lawyer, and he's living in London, working like extremely long hours for a big firm. He comes from Leicester and comes from a Indian family via Uganda. So his dad, his parents have like a very successful business and they kind of want him to come and look after the business. But he is this corporate lawyer and he's just accepted a job in Singapore and he hasn't told his family. And the other timeline is letters written from a man called Hassan, it started in the 1940s to his dead wife, um, who lives in Uganda, who again is from an Indian family, but living in Uganda, and you know, that's where his family is. And again, is like big in the community, is a fairly wealthy man and he's married someone else. But he's writing these letters to his dead wife who he really misses. And like I say, I did sort of struggle to get into it at the start, I guess because there's two timelines and in both timelines, there's quite a lot of characters and there's quite a lot of exposition that I guess the author wanted us to know that it did feel a little bit like it was telling me, not showing me anything, just a lot of exposition in both of those perspectives um, to kind of, I guess, set up like, this is what's happening. And just a few passages that I felt were a little bit, like the writing was suffering because the author just wanted to get across, like, these are the things you need to know. These are the ideas that we're gonna be dealing with. But I would say that's, I still don't, it's still not my favorite writing style, but that's definitely gotten better. And like, I'm only hundred pages in, a lot has happened and I really don't know where the storyline's going, particularly with Samir. And it's interesting because Hafsa Zayan is an author, but also a lawyer, works as a corporate lawyer. And I am really enjoying those elements of it, like the microaggressions that Samir experiences, his kind of inner turmoil about wanting to be there for his family and wanting to not disappoint them, but then also not really wanting to move back to Leicester and be in the family business. And there's a lot of talk of kind of like racially aggravated crimes, almost the difficulties that Samir is just realizing like at 26 years old he's lived his fairly sheltered existence and it's only now that he's starting to realize maybe the racism that he's experiencing or how the world is kind of set up against him and people like him i would say um and then the other timeline it's interesting i don't really know how i'm meant to feel about hassan i think he's quite an interesting character he's very much i guess of his time like a patriarchal very traditional character living in the 1940s 1950s but i'm really enjoying learning more about uganda the political situation in uganda with the british it's like very much about that kind of colonial world in india and in uganda and so i'm enjoying like the historical aspects about that and and learning about that and i think it is interesting that it's through this sort of letter way i'm not sure how these things are going to interject i imagine maybe there's a familiar link between them but yeah i'm definitely enjoying seeing where it goes. I think there's some interesting themes and I'm hoping that I'll continue to gel more with the writing style. So yeah, 100 pages in, it's about 350 pages. Still just chilling. I'm gonna meet Alex this evening when he gets off the train from work and we're gonna have a little 
night together, get some dinner, get some drinks. But for now, it's only like three o'clock and I'm still just chilling, enjoying my afternoon off. So I will continue to read this. Hello, I am late as usual. Um, I think I'm like nearly 200 pages into We Are All Birds Veganda, but going out to meet Alex now for a little date night. So that should be fun. It is now Sunday. I didn't read or speak to you yesterday because I was with my sister. I had a little sister's day um, and yeah, we just spent the whole day together, which was very nice. Now it's Sunday morning. I'm just getting dressed because I think we're going to go for a bit of a walk. I had like a nice chilled morning and I have been reading more of We Were All Birds of Uganda and I'm like 250 pages in. So I've got 100 pages left and I would say in the last kind of 75 to 100 pages that I've been reading, I have started to enjoy it a lot more. I feel like I've kind of found my feet with it a bit better. I'm really particularly enjoying the letters um, and the kind of like historical timeline because we're learning so much about the kind of Uganda's political history, the expulsion of Asian people from Uganda, which I think is really something that is overlooked in terms of history like I've read a couple of books and I know of a couple more books that deal with it but I'd say on the whole as a like as a piece of history it isn't really discussed a lot um, and I think it's done really well because so Hafsa Zayan is mixed race and so she has mixed heritage I believe Asian and African and I think that helps with how kind of nuanced the book is like I just think I mentioned that this guy who's writing the letters Hassan he is kind of an interesting character because he's definitely got layers and we see him as quite patriarchal conservative kind of resistant to the merging of asian and ugandan communities in kampala and we see how that kind of plays out across the political struggles and then what begins to happen um, and i really like that at the center of this novel is this relationship between hassan and abdullah who is a ugandan man who he's always worked with but that was kind of rare to have a ugandan and Asian partnership at that time um, and I think that is going to be something that we continue to explore as in the present timeline Samir has gone to Uganda to kind of find out more about his past and he's with the kind of family of Abdullah and understanding more about what happened but yeah those parts that deal with the the expulsion are just really really moving and sad um, but I think like a really important thing like I say and I just enjoy the way that that story's being told. I would say that I don't massively connect. I find Samir's like first uh, present timeline interesting and like the way, you know, the things he's experienced at work and the way he feels pressure from his family and the kind of community in Leicester and in London. But I don't know that I fully believe him as a character. I'm not sure there's just something where his perspective specifically I'm not massively gelling with. Um, and there is kind of like a bit of a romance element now that he's in Uganda which I think is just very subjective and like it isn't really my thing and obviously this is Doz's kind of recommendation in a way and she is someone who reads a lot of romance like really enjoys that as a genre so I guess that does make sense but I am really enjoying like him being in Uganda I like stories where someone kind of goes back to a place that they are connected to and kind of experience it for the first time and like the descriptions of Uganda are really interesting and understanding more about the the culture and the history so I am definitely enjoying it got 100 pages left uh, and I hope to finish that today um, maybe after we go out for our walk put some perfume on my favorite perfume that I got for Christmas for Lossicus but yeah that is the plan for today and I am enjoying it back from my little walk and I finished reading We Are All Beds of Uganda before we left actually. Sorry the wind is so loud there was like a storm yesterday and he's still kind of hustling around but yeah I finished reading We Are All Beds of Uganda before I went out and I actually ended up like really really enjoying that book. I think the second half of it I just enjoyed so much more than the first half. The one thing I'd said is that like I didn't hugely connect to the main character but we got such character growth from Samir I think in the second half of the book and I really loved the way it ended. Like, I still loved all of the things I said before, like, you know, kind of shining a light on a piece of history that we don't hear about a lot, looking at the stresses of 
family expectation and looking at the really like culture clashes in a place and the sort of kind of racism that all the prejudice that groups feel against each other when they're both oppressed by like a larger white colonialist majority if that makes sense and I just love the way the book ended I'd kind of thought I think because of like the romance and there was elements of Samir kind of you know getting his shit together and like finding a new business and all this stuff I thought it was going to end on quite a positive note and I'm not going to give spoilers but it didn't end like super positively it didn't end super negatively it ended on a real question I think it ended really openly and I think it ended asking the reader to reflect on the questions that it had raised about what the future is of a place that has had such things happen to it um, and thinking about exploitation thinking about realistically like what you would do if you're in a position where my family are coming from a place of prejudice and racism but then also understanding like what your family have been through that maybe made them think like that I, I might be speaking a bit cryptically if you haven't read the book but I just thought it ended on such an interesting note I just found it really really interesting so I think I'm not sure why I'd rate it but it's definitely I preferred it to Yoke but I think I still did prefer Talented Mr Ripley so it's a real like 3.5 star for me i really didn't think i would end up enjoying it as much as i did although i do still think that maybe some parts of it weren't for me in terms of the writing style or the i guess the narration style but yeah interesting and a really slow burner but it came out and i ended up really enjoying it so i'm three out of four done it's sunday night it's really early but i think i'm gonna go to bed just because sunday scaries i want to be in bed but i am gonna read um and so i'm gonna read the fourth and final book for this video which is the prophets by robert jones jr which is simon's pick and i'm really interested to see where this is gonna be with the rest of them we've got like yoke we're all birds of uganda the talented mr ripley and i haven't found like a five star yet i haven't found a personal favorite and i hope i'm not being too negative in this video that is something i'm a bit concerned about like I wanted to read these books because they are the books that people that I really enjoy watching and feel like I have similar tastes to enjoy but that doesn't mean I'll necessarily love them as well and I really hope this video isn't just like me shitting on like my faves fave books but yeah I'm gonna get into bed and read the profits and have high hopes for this one I have high hopes hello it is Monday it's lunchtime it's what else can I say it's a Monday it's giving it's giving Monday last night I started reading the profits and I'm now 100 pages in and I am really 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 enjoying this i just kind of immediately fell in love with the writing style of this book it's set on a slave plantation in mississippi and it's kind of a ensemble cast so each chapter is from a different perspective different characters um so far it's just been from the black characters to the slaves i'm not sure if that will change and at the center of the story is a relationship between two of the men isaiah and samuel who are in a gay relationship and the story really focuses on the the issues that that causes for the rest of the community but without the lens of it being homophobic as much as it not being something that these characters are kind of previously aware of and have an understanding of and we see how that is kind of used against them um within this like power system and terrible kind of situation that obviously makes up the plantation um obviously any book about slavery is such a difficult topic i think to i imagine to write about but to read about because it's like the the biggest horrors of i guess anything that's happened in humanity i think that that is always part of when you read a book like this you're really confronted with those horrors and that does sort of i guess make you feel things but i'd say even beyond that i'm just very very invested in this story like i say the writing style really works for me it is very introspective because we get each character's inner mind a lot of the perspectives have been women and we see like that compounded horrors of that and the abuses that they suffer but the way that they all have their small stories or fears and hopes and trauma kind of come into it and yeah i am kind of just really loving the way it's written loving the story that it is exploring so yeah gonna keep reading it now on my lunch but immediately i only have good things to say about this book and i'm really excited to keep reading it hello i have now finished work i'm just making tea i'm making pasta putinesca uh, my fave very easy tea to do and i'm also two thirds through the profits now it is so beautifully written yet so kind of harrowing obviously because it's describing life for these people these humans 
and the way they're treated on the plantation um, and it kind of goes it's mainly set in that present but it does also kind of go back and we get some scenes of like a community living in Africa as the missionaries and as the white people came in and so it is really um, like really really uncomfortable to read and really hard but equally I kind of feel like I want to read it all in one go like I don't feel like putting it down I feel like I need to experience it as one I don't know in quite a short space of time if that makes sense I just think the story it's telling and the things it's saying are so interesting like particularly like one thing being religion and the way that Christianity and religion is used and kind of was used to control other humans you know control black people to kind of almost justify it so obviously that was the whole point of you know why there was ever kind of intervention into Africa it was because of this like Christian ethos that obviously was more about power and greed and, and capitalism but then also that's kind of mirrored in the way that the problems that Samuel and Isaiah start to experience on the plantation where before then really no one minded that they kept to themselves and maybe some people were even suspicious that they were together this, these Christian ideas are taken on by a fellow black character and that's what kind of escalates the drama um, and you know that is treated with nuance because you kind of hate this character but then equally you see like why again it all coming back to power and then especially I guess I'm surprised that there was so many that there's so much about the female characters in this book I guess because all I'd heard was that you know it's about this relationship but the female characters are done so well and again it's just so showing that you know as well as all of the obvious oppression and, and you know the fact that these people are sla enslaved added kind of sexual i guess objectification and ownership that these women are subjected to but then also we see the way that male enslaved people black men are also fetishized and objectified by white people both men and women and again it's just so so nuanced in that way but whilst also just being a really just written with such beauty and such kind of spirituality so yeah i've got i've turned down quite a few pages recently because the quotes have just been amazing but yeah i've got another third of it to read which i shall do once i've eaten my tea because like i say i do just kind of want to read it all in one go now okay so i have finished the prophets and wow this book was a lot but in a really really good way i really really loved it i think I've like just finished it and I definitely think I need to like let it sink in because there's so much packed in here the writing the storytelling so rich um but also the character studies are like so good like the breadth of characters we get here and I think the dexterity with which Robert Jones Jr puts you in the minds of these different characters both like the enslaved people and these like white plantation owners and workers um and yeah i just think it was such an impactful book the ending was like so strong and really really moving it's definitely at least a four star like i say i do want to reflect on it a bit i think if i had like one slight criticism it would be that sometimes in the more like abstract bits the writing was a little more flowery than i would usually like but like i say the the characters were just so strong and being in the minds of these characters and it was just like so so powerful what were some of my quotes that i turned down like this quote but he did think about the ways in which his body wasn't his own and how that condition showed up uniquely for everyone whose personhood wasn't just disputed but denied like it's just such a powerful book um and yeah i really really loved it so i think that my final order is as follows i think i'm putting i mean i enjoyed all of these books like nothing was below a three and I, yeah, I liked different things about them all and got something out of all of them. I think I'm putting Yoke, then We Are All Birds of Uganda, I think, and then The Talented Mr. Ripley and then The Prophets, which is interesting because based on the amount of similar books that we had, I'm pretty sure I had most with Brittany and then I think Jen, then Dawes and then Simon was last. But this has been a great video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed reading some of my favourite booktubers, favourite books. And yeah, it's been a success. So thank you so much for watching. Please do chat to me in the comments about any of these books. Obviously, I would love if you subscribed. My Instagram, my storygraph will be linked down below. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.